Hello and welcome to Press TV News Analysis. I'm Kaveh Tahvoyi. U.S. soldiers urinating on dead Afghans. U.S. soldiers posing with dead Afghans. And now the burning of Islam's holy book, the Holy Quran at Bagram Air Base. Nationwide protests have erupted and Afghans are angry because their religious values have been disrespected. Even the double apologies from U.S. officials, from the U.S. commander of NATO forces to Defense Secretary Leon Panetta, didn't calm things down. At least 11 Afghans were killed since Tuesday by the very forces that are supposed to protect them. In this news analysis, we ask, isn't 10 years of this U.S.-led war and occupation not enough? Afghans are protesting for the second day after copies of Quran were burned by American forces at their base. People gathered outside Camp Phoenix in Kabul. It's another U.S. military base. The protesters attacked it with the stones. They also blocked a major highway for hours that links Kabul to Jalalabad in the east. All these angry protesters wanted to march towards the U.S. embassy, but the police stopped them. They violated our Islamic values. They burnt copies of our holy book. So we will take all of these foreign troops out of our country to protect our religion. The U.S. embassy was soon locked down. All its staff were told not to get out. Leon Panetta, the U.S. defense secretary, issued an apology. He called the burning of Quran an inappropriate treatment. But protests kept spreading in other parts of Afghanistan, too. In eastern Jalalabad, several protesters were killed and injured when a scuffle broke out between them and the police. They attacked the second largest U.S. air base there. It is not the first time Quran has been violated. Last year, about 24 Afghans died in anti-U.S. protests after a U.S. pastor burned a copy of Quran in public in Florida. Such acts have increased anti-U.S. sentiments here in Afghanistan. If they continue such as violations of uh, Islamic values, they will uh, suffer more in this country. It was not only local people who denounced the desecration of the holy book. President Karzai and Afghan lawmakers have also been outraged. They all called for severe punishments for those who burned the copies of Quran. And if it does not happen, we will pick up guns and fight back, protesters here warned. People here are now very angry. They are saying that such desecrations by foreign troops will not be tolerated anymore. Fires for Sheikh, Press TV, Kabul. Let me welcome to this news analysis, Director of the Awareness Foundation, Reverend Nadim Nassar, who joins us from London. Uh, Dignity, Human Rights and Peace organizer, Dr. Randy Short, joins us from Washington. And Senior Editor of Veterans Today, Gordon Duff, joins us on the phone from Ohio. I'd like to welcome you all. And first to you, Reverend Nadim Nassar. It's hard to believe that U.S. troops involved in this torching of uh, the holy book, the Quran, at Bagram Air Base, didn't, that they didn't know what they were doing. I mean, tossing, it's been reported, they tossed the Quran into a burnt pit that was mixed in with other trash. I mean, 10 years into this war, they know what the protocols are in terms of handling this holy book. I think uh, the, 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 the problem, which is now, the more global we go, this problem insists to appear as something very, very important. And this problem is ignorance. This is very true what you said, that they didn't know what they were doing. Because of that, I would say two things. One thing is what they, uh, what they did was senseless and stupid. And second, um, you, can't, you can't be a guest in a country and offend the country by insulting their religion or culture or something holy for the people. Because of that, I, I, I think what the soldiers did was disgraceful, not only um, in the eyes of Muslims, but in the eyes of all religions around the world. And, and tell us, though, uh, when we look at the protocol, Reverend, <clears throat> the protocol clearly instructed in the booklet that uh, has been given to soldiers talks in detail how to handle the holy book, the Quran, uh, where to place it, 
in what ways to carry it. So it puts into question uh, whether the intent, knowing this, uh, was just a lack of disregard for this book, which later we're going to get into a lack of disregard by U.S. soldiers on Afghan lives. I think the the, the problem of, of instructions in, in, in the army uh, is very, very important. And that raises the question of the discipline of the soldiers. And how much uh, did the soldier follow the, the instructions they were given? I think uh, also they, they are not aware of the depth of their uh, mission in Afghanistan. First of all, they shouldn't be there in the first place. And, and second, they are there to bring values as America claims. So if the soldiers were aware of their mission and the vision of their country to what they are doing in, the, in, in Afghanistan, I think soldiers wouldn't have uh, had the courage to do such offensive um, and, and ridiculous act as, as burning the Quran. And I, I would also say the same thing to the pastor who did the same in Florida. I think it's a reactionary act. It is uh, ignorant and it is impulsive. At that okay. moment, you want to hurt the other. And this is unacceptable. Reactionary and impulsive. Well, let's look at our timeline here. Dr. Randy Short, in 2008, a U.S. soldier riddled the Quran with bullets in Iraq. We just had uh, our guest there in uh, London talk about the pastor Terry Jones in the United States, if you remember the burning of the Quran there. U.S. soldiers urinating on yes. dead Afghans and posing with dead Afghans, parading their body parts. Tell us, how do you explain these incidents and the fact that they just keep getting repeated? Well, I, I, I would differ not in uh, spirit but in substance with the first gentleman in London. What's happening to Afghanis has historically happened to Native Americans and African Americans, of which I am of both people. We had uh, a ritual of murdering and mutilating people based on the color of their skin and the difference of religion. That was an American folk life. I mean, it was a way of life. There were postcards, celebrations. Uh, Americans have what are called picnics where you eat food together, but picnic comes from the expression pick a nigger, which you select a black person to be mutilated and kill. So we have a pastime of mutilating people who are different. There's an arrogance, not ignorance, an arrogance that people who are not Anglo or not European are not human. And in addition to that, there's an arrogance that there's this understanding that people do not have to respect other religions. And so attacking Islam is old. I'm a descendant of Africans who were Muslims brought to the United States and stripped of their religion. There's always been, uh, for the Europeans going to the Crusades and before, an animosity towards people in the Muslim world. There's an expression in America that uh, communicates the lack of humanity of people who are black that are called, that's the word nigger. The same sort of word is used for people who are Muslim, which is sand nigger. And so with the lynchings and the mutilations that have happened historically in this country against blacks, and it goes on, and supermax prisons and other things, this same treatment where people are not treated as if they're children of God based on their, their origin is, is now part of the culture, in particular by people who are white, who believe in white what? supremacy. They now do to others what has always been done to us here. Why? Why has this gone on? Why does it go on inside the United States, as you it's cited some examples? Because and, the then, and then in another country that they've, uh, at this point, many are terming it an occupation, 10 years going on into the 11th year. Are we looking at the high up uh, in terms of officials? and how their sentiments are, and then it trickles down to, for example, U.S. soldiers of background air base? It, they would have, if you respect and love people and, and understand their right to sovereignty, there would have been no invasion in the first place. This is about the same relationship of, of genocide against Indians in the Americas and slavery and genocide against Africans 
in the Americas and what's going on in Africa and Latin America now is a relationship that people who happen to be European feel that the resources of the world is only theirs and the rest of us just happen to be here to be their slaves or to be mistreated. If you recall the quote when the Taliban was told when they were the government of Afghanistan that they had an option to let Unicol put a pipeline through their country, they could either be on a carpet of gold or be under a carpet of bombs. This is a relationship that is uh, that's 103 years old. Going back to the uh, British discovering the Masjid Suleiman oil field in the country of Iran, your country, they recognized 103 years ago that oil would be a strategic factor in the global economy. So it's all about a certain group of people hoarding the world's resources, hating all the other people, dehumanizing them where they don't get to experience or, 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 or benefit from the resources within their, their own country. Mm -hmm. And if they resist, they're killed. You attack their religion, you attack the way they look. And those are smoke screens for the fact that it's about theft. I'm a Christian. The scriptures teach thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. You're supposed to love your neighbor. These people do not practice Christianity. They're practicing predatory racial white supremacist capitalism against other nations in the world. Right. Well, OK. Uh, Gordon Duff, let me bring you in here. Uh, let's look at the uh, apologies, uh, double apologies from the U.S. Defense Secretary, the U.S. NATO commander. Uh, didn't calm things down. Uh, n not to uh, be supporting of what the Taliban has reacted in terms of their explanation, but they have said instead of backing the beliefs of its people and condemning or preventing such actions, it endorses them by shooting and dispersing the Muslim demonstrators. In some well, regards, agree, don't they I have a point here? I agree with much of what the last uh, caller had to say, but there's one extreme inconsistency here we're ignoring, that uh, the, these Korans supposedly were taken from Taliban prisoners. The problem we have is that at Bagram Air Force Base, uh, Afghan citizens have been tortured for the last 10 years, including Dr. Afia from uh, uh, Pakistan. Now, veterans today, we have an Afghan study group uh, which we've, we've been running since 2003, which includes Khalil Nouri, who uh, hopes to be a candidate for president of Afghanistan, uh, Imran Khan, uh, who is the leading candidate for president of Pakistan, uh, Colonel Eugene Khrushchev, former uh, first secretary at the Soviet and Russian embassies, uh, General Hamid Gal, former head of the ISI. None of, the, none of the people in our group agree with one another about anything. But uh, around this, we have, uh, it's an old American saying, we're ignoring the elephant in the room. The pipeline or oil, uh, oil whatever, in a, or gas in Afghanistan or their tremendous gem wealth has not been the uh, what's keeping the U.S. there for 10, 11, 12 years. It's $80 billion worth of heroin. Used to be opium paste. The uh, Taliban had eliminated this. It's processed to heroin. Uh, it's being distributed. Anyone who doesn't think it's being distributed by the Central Intelligence Agency with funds being shared by Governments across the Middle East, including Israel, Switzerland, and Islamic governments, are sharing the sharing in this, and they're allowing this war to continue. There's no rationale for this. As far as the Americans, uh, depending on American military uh, being trained or following any rules whatsoever, the uh, discipline level of American troops is extremely low. Many of these people have been uh, to Afghanistan as many as 10 times. 30% of the people that we have serving there are on antipsychotic drugs. When they come back to the U.S., over 26,000 of our troops who have served in Afghanistan and Iraq have committed suicide. 500,000 have applied for permanent disability based on psychological problems. These are the troops serving in Afghanistan. The acts that you're seeing are by people, uh, by a military that is no longer capable of functioning there. And as other callers have said, there was, the U.S. had no right to go in in the first place, 
No one from Afghanistan had ever attacked the United States. Uh, I am a very strong believer, and I come from America's intelligence community, mm -hmm. that uh, 9-11 involved no hijackers whatsoever, was a staged false flag event, that the invasion of Afghanistan, uh, Iraq, and Iran was planned well in advance. The okay. invasion of Iran had never... Uh, was never able to materialize. We're, uh, we're going to discuss and more, what, uh, Gordon Duff. Keep those go thoughts. We're going to discuss more with you some of the other reasons why the U.S. is staying there, even though, as you mentioned, some of the soldiers there uh, are suffering uh, the, the different types of consequences from this uh, long war. But, uh, Reverend uh, uh, Nadim Nassar, I'd like to come back to you, uh, talk a little bit more about what the U.S. has done in that country. Uh, it has been reported uh, that the U.S. has used depleted uranium, uh, reports of cluster bombs being used, the night raids that have killed innocent civilians, uh, also the use of assassination drones, repeated torture allegations at background, trying to paint a picture of what U.S. has done in that country, uh, which all s seem to point uh, that to a large degree, there just is a disregard for human life. Um, that, is, that is true, but first of all, let me say that uh, the, the, uh, the gentleman who spoke after me I think he also showed some ignorance because he put America and talked about these soldiers and he assumed that they are Christians. And this is very sad when we assume that America is Christianity. I'm sorry, America it does not represent Christianity. And I am personally against any military intervention, American or British or any other country into the affairs of, 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 of another country. Any military um, intervention carries within it uh, um, violence, killing, um, um, violating the human rights, you name it. Of course, there are huge atrocities uh, done in the name of America and in the name of democracy and in the name of values in Afghanistan and not only in Afghanistan, in Iraq and in, the, in, in, in Palestine and in the whole of the Middle East. But I want to differentiate between America and Christianity and please don't put the same the two in the same box. Okay. Because well, America is the last one to represent Christianity in the world. Well, uh, Dr. Randy Short, uh, if you can uh, respond to that, uh, 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 what uh, the Reverend said there, uh, quickly I, I, before we move on to the other subjects since we're running short of time. I would agree with him 100. I would agree. Would, I never assumed that the, the gentlemen were, uh, were Christian at all. But there's a mask where people hide behind Christianity with Islamophobia here in the United States. And I wanted to make it clear that those folks aren't Christian. So I agree with you. I'm the last person that's going to say that this country that held some of my ancestors as slaves and this Washington, D.C. is built on land stolen from my tribe, the Piscataway tribe, to call this country Christian. So I beg to differ. I'm not ignorant and I don't think that, that you've said anything that I disagree with other than the, the intensity to which I personally understand the problem. Well, when you talk about the problem then, why don't you tell us, uh, based on what has been said so far, what, what is it that the U.S. Th then is doing in terms of their conduct? I mean, are, do they just have military uh, goals there and they don't care if, how if, the soldiers are executing the, themselves? There, there, there's, there's, several th there's several things going on here. First of all, I'm certain because I have a relative that, that did the, the Islamic cultural training for the U.S. military. I'm not going to say his name. And I have a copy that's very thorough. This is a man that speaks Arabic. There is an actual program that they have that is excellent. Now, how that's carried out by, say, people who are in the military because they can't get jobs in the United States or people who are, are not viable to the economy, when you get people who come from perhaps the inferior intellectual backgrounds, the military is notorious in this country, in the past at least, for being a place you went when you weren't able to go to college or didn't have a skill to get a job. So we don't always get the best Americans to even serve in the armed services. I'm not saying that's always the case, but there's a stereotype to the volunteer army that the best people don't necessarily go. 
If you add that to so, the fact so I'm that sorry to live, jump in. So do you mean that uh, because of that, we, because of that, that explains maybe some of the actions that have taken place, such as the burning of the Quran? Or uh, if you get people, if you get people who who are not necessarily uh, mature or well educated or or cultured. Aside from the fact that any invasion, any war produces atrocities, I agree with the minister in, in London. When you get people with all that conflict and you add it to people who may not be uh, up to par from where they came from, take them to another society, give them guns, have them on drugs, and I can't imagine what these people won't do. Okay. Gordon Duff, uh, you talked about some of the reasons why uh, the U.S. is uh, inside Afghanistan. You mentioned uh, some of the minerals uh, that uh, Afghanistan is rich with. What about U.S. bases? Uh, that's something not discussed. 450, the last estimate, $1 billion in expansion, of which uh, in Kandahar and in Bagram, it's said to be expansions in the works, of which there are going to be robotic warfare uh, to include also the use of these assassination drones. Is that what Afghanistan stands for for the U.S., which puts into question their uh, uh, so-called 2014 withdrawal? Well, the, the withdrawal has been moved forward to 2013. It's been accelerated because of the deterioration of relationships with Pakistan has severely cut down the deliveries of fuels. Uh, the U.S. Is, uh, has had curtailed around four weeks ago. I don't know if you've uh, read the reports or not, but... Most combat operations in Afghanistan uh, are being wound down right now. The U.S. has begun a staged, uh, an unannounced staged pullout of Afghanistan, uh, which is, in fact, an admission that we have hopelessly lost the war, that we have totally, uh, as, your, as your last caller would agree, we have totally alienated the uh, people of Afghanistan. Now, Afghanistan is a polyglot, a polyglot uh, society uh, created by the Russians and the British based on the original one, uh, 1903 Duran line, uh, areas of Soviet influence. You have the northern Tajik, Uzbek people. You have a lot of Farsi speakers, of course, uh, near, near your border. You have the uh, uh, Durrani tribes in the, in the center, the Pashtuns who... who uh, uh, go not only through southern Afghanistan, but well into Pakistan, where they may have as many as 20 million uh, there. And uh, you have a society that is very much built on uh, a royal family. Okay, okay. okay. unfortunately, leadership. i got to... I, I got to come in here since we're short of time. We're out of time. Sorry about that. Gordon Duff, we appreciate it, from a Senior Editor at Veterans Today. Thank you very much. Also, I'd like to thank uh, our other guest, Director of the Awareness Foundation, Reverend Nadim Nassar from London. Thank you very much for your statements. And uh, Dignity and Human Rights and Peace Organization, Dr. Randy thank Short. You. Thank you very much for your statements from Washington there. And of course, you, the reader, thank you so much for watching another edition of the Press TV News Analysis. Any comments or suggestions, do send it to us. Newsroom at PressTV.ir is our email address. From Mikovat Tahoe and the entire team, it's goodbye.